Hi, and thanks for watching. So I want to share my story with you in the hopes that it'll help you on your journey to raise your iron levels and grow your hair. So as you can see, my hair is pretty thin. Uh, I usually actually don't wear it like this. I usually either wear it uh, back or with um, some clip-on hair extensions just because uh, I don't like the look that it gives that you can see right through it. Um, so my hair loss started when I was about 18 or 19 years old. Um, so before that, when I was a kid, my hair was really tight curls and it was so poofy that I couldn't even wear it down. So it's funny because it was too poofy that I couldn't wear it down and now it's so thin that I can't wear it down. So it's funny how that works. Um, but essentially when I was about 18, my hair just started falling out. So I noticed at that time that my scalp changed as well. Um, I was getting some buildup on my scalp, not flakes falling out, but just irritated scalp. So I thought that that might been, have been the cause of the hair loss at that time. Um, in addition, I went vegetarian at that time as well. So I wasn't eating any meat. Um, so I saw my doctor and had blood work, uh, which didn't raise any flags. Um, so being a teenager, I hoped that the hair loss was just temporary and unfortunately went on with my life. Uh, so at that time, as you know, similar to now, I really couldn't wear it down because it was just too thin. In fact, it was even more thin than it is now. So a couple years later, I moved to a new city for my university co-op and I went vegan at that time and I wasn't feeling the greatest. So I went to see a doctor and he did the full uh, gamut of testing and found that my iron was low and directed me to take iron supplements. So whichever supplements I took at that time didn't really agree with my stomach. So I kind of stopped taking them eventually, uh, which obviously I probably shouldn't have done in retrospect. <laughs> so I moved back to my home city and was seen by my regular general practitioner, uh, basically for the next 10 years. So he actually ordered blood work for me every four months during this time. So if you can imagine, I went for blood work every four months for 10 years. And his only concern really was that my hemoglobin, hemoglobin was in the normal range. So uh, he just didn't want me to be anemic, but he never once was concerned about my low ferritin, which basically in the 10 years ranged from about three to six ferritin. Um, so no mention about how the ferritin affects hair, nothing about how it has to be at least 60 to uh, be able to grow healthy hair, nothing about that at all. And again, I went on with my life. Um, I had uh, two wonderful, healthy, large babies. So however that happened, I don't know. They must have taken every last bit of ferritin out of my body. And I kept getting my blood tested three times per year. So basically life went on. I dealt with my thin hair by wearing clip-in hair and mostly wearing it up. Um, so I just accepted it as my cross to bear in life. Um, so fast forward to the summer of 2010 and I saw an allergist for allergy reasons and his immediate concern was why why is your iron so low so he thought that it was one of two reasons he thought that i could have celiac or that i'm losing blood uh, through stool actually that was his thought um, so i i thought that it probably wasn't the case either of them um, but we did the testing and lo and behold he called me back into his office about a month later and told me I have celiac disease, which was completely surprising. <laughs> so 12 years after my hair loss basically began, um, at that time I thought, okay, this is finally the answer as to why my iron is so low um, and perhaps it will you know, fix all these issues I had with, with tiredness and, and brain fog and all that. So my doctor put me on iron supplements. Um, I think it was ferrous gluconate at that time and told me to take two per day and I was hopeful that this would fix it. So um, I took two per day for four months and my ferritin went from five to 35, which was absolutely amazing. So I started to feel better um, and things, um, so my hair, I actually noticed that it was getting thicker, which was wonderful. Um, but, and this is where my doctor failed me, um, he said that my ferritin is now in the normal range because it's 35 and so that I can stop taking the pills, which I did. So, and I was actually happy about that because the pills didn't really agree with my stomach because my stomach tends to be uh, finicky as well. So I was happy to set those aside. 
but again, no mention of the fact that ferritin is needed to um, to grow hair. So he thought his his thought was it's higher than the clinical bottom range, so you're good. You don't have to take the supplementation. And I assumed at that time that the thicker hair that was coming in was just a result of not eating gluten because I was uh, diagnosed celiac. Um, so uh, as a woman and as a vegetarian, so I was no longer vegan uh, at this time for the past, I think, five years. Um, so my iron slowly went down and the thickness that I was noticing basically disappeared. So a couple more years passes and uh, now it's 2012. And my new doctor uh, didn't really check my ferritin regularly, so I didn't really keep uh, too close tabs on it. Um, so again, the years passed, and then last year, so summer of 2017, um, my ferritin was 13. So again, this is in the clinical range. Um, that doctor also said it was fine. So fast forward to this year, so April 2018. And I decided to make, I was, I, I was sick of this at this point, dealing with this for 20 years. So I decided to make finding the solution to this hair loss basically my primary goal in life at the time. So I basically read everything I could about hair loss and finally found information to make the connection between ferritin and hair loss. So I, I actually, I'm, I'm still awed that, that this is something that no doctor in 20 years had told me about. Um, and I had to find this out on my own 20 years later. So I'm still, I'm in shock by this, but, uh, and that no doctor noticed that I have thin hair. They should have said, you have thin hair, let's up your ferritin or let's, let's do something. So it, I feel that I was failed. Um, so I, once I started Googling, I found tons of sites and videos um, of so many others in the same situation as me. And I finally found I, what I hope will, will solve uh, the issues with my hair. So here I am today. Um, so I've been taking two iron pills a day since April. Um, so that's about three months and you can see that it's starting to grow back. So I'm really hopeful because see how thin it is here. Here it's starting to come in. So uh, I do take my supplements with citrus and I avoid taking them with dairy and caffeine just to make sure they're, they're absorbed um, better. So I'm gonna get my iron tested in a few weeks and I'm so hopeful that it has gone up. And I also have a video on iron levels which explains why you need a certain level for optimal hair growth. And I will be also doing one shortly on the different types of iron supplements. So you can see what I've been using and kind of determine the different uh, types and see what can work for you. Thank you.